Gwendolyn. And don't laugh. She's a little bit beyond her prime now. The figure isn't what it used to be. She's bulging a little at the seams. But there was a time, and it wasn't so long ago either, when she was the snappiest thing on the road. And you'd have been proud to be sitting up there behind that racy dashboard. Yes, sir, 40 years is apt to make quite a change in any one of us. But seriously, what do you think the biggest change has been in cars in 40 years? Style? Appearance? Power? Yes, but some of the most important changes have come in something else. Safety. Every year, more and more safety has been built into the cars we drive. And many of the driving risks we once considered unavoidable are now almost completely eliminated. Take the obvious features that increase safety by lessening driver fatigue. Easier stopping through improved brakes, both standard and power operated. Easier handling because of ball bearing and power steering. High level ventilation. Automatic signals for stopping and turning. Automatic windshield washers, electric wipers plus the improved vision of the windshield itself. Remember what the windshield was like just 20 years ago? Remember the strip down the middle, the blind spot in the corner? By 1949, the glass has started to curve. The area is widening. By 1953, the center divider strip has disappeared. By 1955, the corner post has begun to tip backwards to eliminate the blind spot. And today, almost 1,100 square inches of glass. Safety plate glass. But there are other safety advances that are even more important. Safety features that are engineered into the very heart of a car. Built-in safety. In any driving situation, there are three things we can do. We can stop, we can steer around, or we can accelerate past the obstacle. The decision rests with us. The ability to do it rests with the car. Let's see first what's been done to cars in regard to stopping power. Four-wheel self-energizing hydraulic brakes, which means that the forward momentum of the car actually helps apply braking action. Plus, rivetless bonded brake linings, 11-inch brake drums, and the modern anti-dive suspension system that brings the car to a smooth stop like this, instead of like this. But suppose stopping is impractical and we have to steer around the obstacle ahead. How well that car steers depends, for one thing, on how well balanced it is. And what does an upside-down bottle have to do with a car's balance? Plenty. Watch. Didn't take much to knock it over, did it? But now look. We'll put it in this position. Same force exactly, but the bottle remains standing. Because its weight is concentrated down low, it has a lower center of gravity, a principle that applies equally to automobiles. And the steady effort of manufacturers to build cars closer and closer to the ground has not been for appearance's sake alone, but for safety, to lower the center of gravity. The result is that today's car can do things that would have stood Gwendolyn on her ear. But there's another factor in the balance of a car that means safety. It's called weight distribution. Pretend this box is an automobile. It is perfectly balanced because its weight is evenly distributed front and back. But suppose we put too much weight in the back. The weighted rear end swings out on the turn. Now, too much weight in the front end. Trouble again. The heavy front end tends to keep going straight. So let's put that weight right where it belongs just a little behind dead center. A smooth, easy turn, because now it's correctly balanced. By the same principle, 
a modern car's weight is balanced just a little behind center. Balance. That means safety in steering. And here's something else. Remember what used to happen when you accidentally let your front wheel drift off the edge of the concrete? You were all over the road. But today, a world of difference due to modern wide tread low pressure tires plus spherical joint front suspension that takes the turns and resists the rolls. Plus, outrigger rear suspension with springs set wide apart to provide even more stability. Add to all this a kind of steering that is based on the principle that the most effortless motion we know is that of a rolling ball. Put that principle to work to create ball bearing steering and you have another safety item where your security depends on your steering. Our third alternative for meeting a driving situation is in accelerating. Under the hood of today's car is a tremendous reserve of power to meet just such situations as this. Power you may never actually need but which is mighty good to have in case you ever do. Getting power to the rear wheels efficiently and effectively is another factor in acceleration. Remember how it used to be? If one wheel spun, the other one wouldn't turn. Today that's changed. With a new safety feature now available, posit traction. When one wheel loses traction, power is instantly shifted over to the other wheel. Posit traction. More safety through more effective use of engine power. Yes, one of the most important changes in cars over the years has been in the building into them of greater and greater safety. Increased stopping power, increased stability, improved performance all around. But with all that's been done, there's one part of the car that no amount of engineering can do anything about the man or woman whose hands are on the wheel and whose face is in the mirror. How much safety is built into him or her? How much courtesy will he bring to the road? How much consideration? How much care? How much attention? Yes, tremendous changes have been made in that car of yours. Changes that make it safer more dependable, more responsive than ever before. And when as much has been done for the driver as has been done for the car, we'll all be in safer hands. How about you? How do you fit into this picture?